Hello and welcome! This is the August edition of Creating with Sketches. And if I've done everything right, <laughs> we are doing two page sketch number four in the printable from Scrapbook Generations. So, my friends, welcome! I am so excited that you are here. If you are brand new to the channel, welcome! Welcome, welcome. Love to see new faces. If you are returning, I'm so glad you're back. Pull up a drink. We're going to be making a layout. Now, let's talk a little bit about this specific hop. This is one of my favorites because I really love sketches. I really love that they are a jumping off point. And I think I have said this just about every single month since we started. Um, in this PDF that you get from scrap, Scrapbook Generations, and all of their information is down below. You get a section where Allison Davis, who creates all of the sketches, kind of talks about them. She talks about sketches in general, that they can be a, a jumping off point. She goes through some misconceptions. One of them being is that sketches are only for brand new people, which I completely agree with her. They are not. They are a fantastic jumping off point. And then we have the individual sketches themselves along with a bunch of modifications. Now, I will not be showing you this sketch in this video because it is a purchasable and I want to honor Scrapbook Generation because they allow me to be able to make these videos. However, down below are all the links you need to get it. This PDF has been one that I have used over and over and over again, and it truly is one that I feel like is worth all the money. Now, for those of you playing along that you have the sketchbook, I get asked all the time, if I don't say this up front, where, you know, which of all of the options did you use? And so I am trying to make sure that I'm very conscious of the fact that you can't read my mind, so you don't really know necessarily where I went with it. For this, I am making a one-page sketch, and I am only using the left-hand side of the original sketch. So, let's get started with what I'm using. What I really loved about um, the left-hand side of this sketch is the grid that is created. And it's not a typical all-over-the-page grid. It is kind of condensed into a small area and you'll see that as I make my page. Ooh. Um but I also like the detailing that has been done on this page. And I feel like that it is definitely something that could be modified and used in lots of different layouts. So that's going what I'm going to say about the sketch. I am using Disney photos. I am trying to grind through these and get them done. Um, this piece actually is, once I knew what photos I wanted to use, this piece really set off what papers I was going to use. And this is a memory card from Project Mouse. So it is a digital collection. And I printed the papers. Now I can only print up to eight and a half by 11. So I'm gonna teach you guys some of my tricks that I like to do. So um, I am going to be scrapbooking photos from some of our favorite places to eat at Disney World. So right off the bat, these are two of our absolute favorites and they are fun. Enzo's Hideaway is at Disney Springs while um, I will slaughter this because I don't speak Italian. Taratatoria al forno is at the boardwalk so both of these would be places you could visit without having a uh, park pass now i'm going to build off of a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock that's going to be my background and then i have printed from project mouse a bunch of papers and this is one of my tricks that i like to do so if there's something that's directional, like this one is, I print it in both directions. That just gives me the most bang for my buck because I get 11 inches by 11 inches. So for this specific layout, um, we are making some stripe 
E pieces and some of them do run this way and some run this way so that's why I have this these are I'm trying to remember which collections they came from some came from vibes some came from the other collection that I used was adventure I think so I really just kind of pulled the ones that I thought would work best. This is not a Project Mouse. This is a Rachel, can't think of her last name, but I liked it. There is in the Project Mouse, there is one that does not have the, the speckles. I don't know if I'm gonna use this, but I thought that this was fun. So I printed it again because of the directionality. I have it going to both ways. Then we have some solids, some wood grains. Now, I did with the wood grain. I did not print the two. I am debating on where I would use this. I did pull a whole lot more than what I will be using. I did print from um, Tracy Reed. Sorry, I have to stop and think for a minute. Her... Um, Weekender collection has a food, excuse me, an add-on that is um, restaurant-y, food-y kind of things. And so I printed some of those. Don't know if I will use them. The colors aren't exactly perfect, but they work well enough. So I do have that printed. These are Project Mouse and they're from beginnings I think is the name of the collection but again I printed just a bunch of papers that I know I'll use because they are fantastic and I thought that they would work well with what we've got going on so what I want to do is um, I need to grab an eight and a half by eleven piece of just regular paper and um, I'm gonna build my photos on that and then I'm going to use that on my layout. I figure that that will work the best for me as I am working on this. So I'm going to clear everything. I'm not, I've already cut my photos. I did that before I hopped on camera. So I don't necessarily have anything to cut right this second. So I'm going to put my trimmer up, cut the mic for just a second, and we'll get this cleared off where we can make a layout. Let's get started with this focal area for our photographs. I'm gonna build this onto a white piece of paper so that I know that everything is fit correctly and it gives me a little bit of wiggle room when we get to adding the strips. So to make my smaller photos match the size of my larger photos, I am gonna cut a black mat out of cardstock and then I've come back and cut a slightly smaller mat out of this pretty gold quadrifoil-ish looking paper. Then we're gonna layer these up so that all of my photos are three and a half, or all of my squares are three and a half by three and a half, which matches the size of the photos. So this is one of those grid layouts that I really think becomes very unique because you have two different sides of photographs. You have the larger, three and a half inch square, which is what dictates the size of everything. But because you have made some smaller and matted those, it gives more interest to this large photo grid. So if you are someone who likes the look of a grid, but feels like you struggle with it, this is it. You can see there that I'm looking to make sure everything is straight. I have realized that my trimmer, bless its little heart, is not cutting straight. So. In the comments, if you have a trimmer that you love, I still haven't found one and I would love to. All right, let's talk about stretching eight and a half by 11 paper. So because these are printed collections, obviously I can't do a 12 by 12 piece. So you saw me split that there. And that is because I know that this large photo grid element is going to span the majority of this page. It's gonna go right down the middle. It's really gonna give me some room to work. Here I am cutting my strips. I believe they are one inch, but you will find in the cutting guide 
well, in the sketch, there's a cutting guide. And so, you know, one thing that you saw there was I pulled two pieces of that dark blue uh, damask, I was trying to think of the word, paper. That's because it has two different orientations and it really did look odd on its side. So I did print twice, once going more in a landscape, once going more in a vertical. And so this is going to allow me the ability to kind of stay true to that damask. Here we are just placing the pieces, the little strips, trying to make sure that they look the best. Sorry that you guys get to see the top of my head. That is just what has happened with age. I got to get a little closer into the paper. I did decide to slide my strips a little bit over onto that bulky effect gray paper. I think I did that because I did not trim that paper down to match the measurements. Um, in the in the heat of the moment, I think I just went with the full length. So here we are trying to decide which papers to use. I don't like on this light blue paper that there was a little bit of white, even though I have a borderless printer it does leave an edge on the very bottom end. So when it prints on that long end at the very bottom where it kicks the paper out, there's just the tiniest little bit of white. All right, let's get these strips going down our page or across the, the left and right of them. And you can see that it works beautifully with this large mat. It really allowed me to get all of the pieces in place before gluing everything down. Here I am trying to decide if I want to use any more of the digital things that I have printed. And I kind of decide that I don't want to. It introduces some colors that are yes in the photograph, but are not in any of the other elements that I have printed. So I set that aside. I did punch out some Mickey heads to use as my embellishments. And here we are using that Carrie Bradford stamp set that you guys know I love so much. This is District upper outline extra large literally ugh, they're, they're perfect they're easy to cut out um, I do have a set by Ellie studio that is smaller that I love to use as well so these kind of get used on a lot of layouts they tend to sit on my desk so here we are we're just gonna fussy cut them out this is the easy part so to speak um, you will see here as I'm cutting out the D I am gonna show you how I handle the middle of letters I just snip right up through them once you get it glued down, you really don't see that cut line. So it's just, it's one of those little tippy things that I have learned along the way that says, for me, I don't mind the look of it. It makes it a lot easier. I don't have to get out the X-Acto knife on every single letter. I will say on the ones that have a smaller space, like the A in this stamp set, I will get out my X-Acto knife and trim it by hand. We're going to add a little line around these Mickey heads, help them stand out just a little bit and match those stamped letters. And then we're going to use the black letters out of Doodlebug's Sunshine uh, letter sticker set. Sorry, I forgot what these were called to um, do the word Disney. These were photos from some of our favorite Disney dining restaurants. And so that's where the title came from, Disney dining. We're gonna get these all sat down, stuck down, and then we're gonna add in the little Mickey head. We're gonna come back to this top Mickey head and get it outlined so that it stands out like the bottom one. And then we're gonna get that stuck down. Let's add a little K and T detail up here at the top as a finishing touch to our layout. Here's our finished layout. I am going to really quickly clip the edge of that since it's hanging off. There we go. Alrighty. So I do need to add some journaling. I will do that off camera once I've figured out what I, exactly I want to say. But here it is. Here it is. So down below, a whole bunch of things. There are links to everyone else who's made a layout with this sketch that's in the Creating with Sketches group hop. Can't wait to see what else everybody else does with this. I am quite sure there will be a lot of folks who do the actual two page layout. Again, I just did the one side. I really love how this one turned out. I know I say that every time, but this one um, 
I'm really pleased with. There are some things that I wish that I had caught, like the fact that his eyes are glancing that way. I would have flipped the photo so his eyes were looking in, but you know, it kind of is what it is. So there it is. Ugh, so fun. Really love it on this creamy paper rather than being on white, white. It allows some of these other papers that um, normally would kind of stand out against white to be used. So I have all those links down there. I have links as well down there for some of my favorite places to shop. I will make sure that I add into those links some of the digital places I like to shop. I don't think I have those added yet, but I will go ahead and do that. So I hope that you learned some things. I hope that you walk away inspired and wanting to scrapbook your own pages using these layout uh, sketches. Again, they are the Creating with Sketches by Allison Davis over at Scrapbook Generation. That link is down there. I know that for sure. And so, my friend, until we're together again next month, go make some memories. Bye-bye.